Meditating under the tree of aesthetics, there lays one man who has sworn to expose the secrets of the SAT. College board hates him, varsity prep hates him, his parents hate him, but he shan't stop till he's executed. If I die for this video, make my life worthwhile, score that thick 800 for me. When I first took the PSAT, I got a perfect 980. Truthfully, I never cared about my standardized test scores until my senior year of high school when I realized that the university I was attending gave a fat scholarship to those who got 1400 or above. However, I didn't want to go through 500 different resources. I wanted to increase my score as fast as possible with the least amount of work possible. So I created this approach and evidently it worked because I took the SAT again and this time I got a 1470 with a perfect 800 on the math. <clears throat> I'm not smarter than I was when I scored the 980. I just learned how to scheme my way through some dumb test. If you follow the approach that I did, then I can guarantee at the bare minimum you'll score a 750, but more likely an 800 on the math section. What the hell wasn't even recording? But there are <laughs> What's the most aesthetic way to do six? So there are six main points I'm going to cover in this video. First, why you should focus on improving your math score specifically to improve your overall score. Second, the mindset that you need to have. Patterns and predictability on the SAT. The best resources. My special secret saucy tactic, which I'm going to call the 464. A two month study plan. But first, why math? So if you want to increase your overall score and you don't have at least 750 on the math section, it's probably your best time investment to just focus on improving your math. When improving your reading comprehension abilities and your ability to read faster, that can honestly be a process that takes years. What up? I'm Jared. I'm 19 and I never fucking learned how to read. However, anyone can hammer out math section in months when they focus on the right things. It's also very easy to improve your writing section. However, your writing score is combined with your reading score. So technically your math score is worth twice as much as your writing score. So if you want to improve your overall score, first you should focus on math. Next, the correct mindset. The most important thing here is your mindset. And no, I don't mean that feel good mental masturbation, work hard and you can do anything. That's BS. Here's the mindset you need. Above all, you need to focus on improving your process of thinking. Repeat after me. Improve your process of thinking. Say that to yourself 10 times every morning. Improve your process of thinking. Maybe I'll make an ASMR video of me saying that and you can listen to it while you sleep. Because think about it, when you approach a math problem, a few different ways of answering that question will pop up into your head. But what you have to realize here is that you don't consciously control these thoughts. You are in a way conditioned to think them. So your goal here is to rewire your subconscious to have the correct ways pop into your mind. So this is possible for the SAT because there's only a few things you really, your mind really needs to be able to pick out. First, what type of question is it? The SAT has a very set limited type of questions and they're going to try to reformat these types of questions into a, a bunch of different ways. But really, it's always going to be asking you the same type of question. And then obviously, you also need to know how to do them. But the active conscious part of your mind, it's really only plugging in the numbers to the methods that the subconscious part of your mind provide. So your subconscious is the one doing the heavy lifting. So the rest of the tactics in this video is more or less how to wire your subconscious. Okay. Patterns and predictability. So the next thing you need to accept is the nature of the SAT. It is very predictable. Like I said, there's a set type of questions. You do not need to be a god at math. And that's like to get 420 million tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. You just have to crack this pattern. So there's actually only two steps you need to get a perfect 800 on the math section of the SAT. Step one, be Asian. Step one, somewhat learning math. Now you can skip this step if your foundation of math is already strong, but if you're actually like remedial, like I was, then you're gonna need to go through a phase where you have to actually learn 
math. Two is the rewiring of your subconscious. The step of somewhat learning math should get you to the 630 to 680 range. But after that point, it pretty much just comes down to rewiring your subconscious. And this can make the difference between a 630 score and a 800. Resources and tools. All right, here's the biggest tip you're gonna get in this entire video. Stop using stupid fucking resources. Never touch a Kaplan or Princeton review book in your life. If you own one, or if your grandma bought you one, say sorry old lady and Peter, I don't think that's a category. Oh, okay. Best documentary. Ah! And then go back and recycle it because according to Twitter, we care about the environment now. Learning material. So there's two books you can use to learn. College Panda, Math SAT, and Poem the SAT. You don't need both, you just have to pick one. But if you're very indecisive, just pick College Panda. So when you're going through the book, make sure you do all the problems it provides. Don't move on to a chapter before you really understand that chapter. I mean, take good notes. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to read a book. Phase two, conditioning your subconscious. So the resources here, the best resources are the official SAT practice guides and literally nothing else. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Trent, I already went through all eight of the practice tests. They're not enough. Keep watching the video. And also, in my opinion, Khan, Ac Khan Academy freaking sucks. I mean, it probably has a place in like strengthening weak points, but in general, the questions on Khan, on Khan Academy aren't directly the same type of questions on the SAT, even though they're made by the same people. And when you're taking the practice exams, obviously you don't have to take the entire exam, just take the math section if you're focusing on your math. It's also important that when you take the practice exams, every question that you get wrong, put it in a separate notebook and really learn how to do that question and that type of que question. Don't move on until you understand every question on the previous practice exam. If you're still stuck, you can probably post it on Reddit and have someone answer it for you or teach it to you. And this brings me to the secret key of getting an 800. If you want an 800, you should be able to get an 800 on every single practice exam. It is okay to redo the same practice, practice, blech. It is okay to redo the same practice, practice, practice. It is okay to redo the same practice exam. If you take a practice, Practice. How do you say this word? Practice. Practice. If you take a practice exam and write down all the questions that you get wrong, learn those questions, then theoretically, the next time you take that same exam, you should get an 800, right? Well, theoretically, yes, but that's just not how your mind works. You need conditioning. And this is where everyone goes wrong. Everyone has already taken the practice practice exams but truthfully if they went back and retook it they still wouldn't get that perfect score so they haven't absorbed all the information that they can from this, those exams they're just too obsessed with finding new resources so let's do some math there's 38 questions on the calc section and 20 questions on the no calc section this means there's 58 questions per test there's eight practice tests available this means 58 times 8, there's 464 questions available to you. If you can get these 464 questions correct 100% of the time, I can guarantee that as long as you don't have an aneurysm during the test, you will score a minimum of 750, but probably you'll score an 800. So when people think, you know, I need more resources, I need more resources, we'll have to ask, can you do these 464 questions? 100% of the time, correctly and efficiently? If the answer is no, then that's what you need to work on. And if the answer is yes, then you're probably fine. So I'm gonna give you guys a two month study plan. You don't have to use it, it's obviously just an example, but it's pretty similar to what I did. Once there's around 61 days, divide that by seven, let's just say nine weeks. So week one to two, you guys have to go through the book that you chose, College Panda or Pwn the SAT and just really understand the book, take notes on it, do all the questions. If 
you work efficiently, you can definitely get through the book in two weeks. Week three, take practice tests one and two. Write down all the questions you've missed on a separate notebook. Learn it. Same jazz. Week four, practice test three and four. Week five, practice test five and six. Week six, practice test seven and eight. And then for week seven, go back and redo practice test one to four. For week eight, go back and redo practice test five to eight. And then for week nine, just redo every single practice test, which shouldn't be too bad because you just did all of them recently, right? And then at this point, you should be able to score an 800 on all of them. If not, just keep redoing them or at least relearning the questions you got wrong. All right, lazy mofos, go get that 800. Above all, remember to be Asian. Uh, I'm going to go study some Kaplan and Princeton reviews for my finals. Oh. Gotta love it though they hating on me. I be on sunset, still go back to 68 to Stony. Cooked out my basement, drop my tape and get my homies placements. I play the keys in my sleep on the beach, that's a dream. Baby.